Hi guys, Ree here from mummyof4.com. Welcome back to my channel and a little come plan with me video. So I've realized I've not actually shared my planning system in depth, even though I get questions about it all the time. So I've got a lot of planning I need to do for the coming weeks and I shall explain all of what's going on in a second. So I thought, why not? I'll just bring you along to plan with me. So grab yourself a drink of choice, maybe a snack, get cozy and let's plan together. So you can grab whatever you want to plan. You can do paper planning, you can do digital planning. Let me know which kind of girl you are, digital or paper. Now I am gonna be using the digital version of my planner, but let me just say here now, you don't need to buy a planner in order to plan anything. You don't need an iPad. You can just do all this with a pen and a piece of paper. Obviously, if you would like a planner, I can highly recommend this one because I designed it myself with everything I needed in it. So this is the printed version of my organized life planner and the details of how you can purchase this are below or you can purchase the digital version that I will be using and you can either print out those sheets and use a very traditional pen and paper or you can plan directly onto your tablet like I'm gonna show you. But you do not need any of that. You you do not need to wait until you've got the perfect planner, the perfect notebook, the perfect time, the perfect pen, just whatever works for you. Whatever works for you for your planning, you do that. So that being said, with all that out of the way, let's get on with how I plan. Now, obviously I'm kind of like a digital kind of girl. So all of our actual things we have to do and places we have to be start off in a shared family calendar. In fact, not just a shared family calendar, there are several calendars. So I've got a shared family calendar that I use. Personally, I use Apple calendars because we're on, you know, I use, a, I've got a Mac, iPhone, things like that. And anyone in our family can see what's on that calendar. So on that calendar, I put anything that all of the family's gonna need to know. So the children's karate lessons, the dancing lessons, if someone has a doctor's appointment because both myself and my husband would need to know where that child has to be at that time. All of those things go on the shared digital family calendar. Whenever the school give us emails or whatever with specific dates like parents evening, I put those on that calendar and I can pick that up from my iPad, my phone, whatever. That's not planning. That's just what date and what time are things happening. The planning happens after the digital calendar. So that's where my actual planner comes in. I take the information from that digital calendar and with my planner, I figure out how we're going to make all of that stuff happen. Are you with me? So that's the purpose of planning. I don't use my planner as a calendar. I use my planner as a means of untangling the spaghetti in my head that is trying to keep a million balls in the air at once. We're gonna start with the month overview. And the reason I like the digital version, the reason it's, it does well with me, is because I've always got it with me in some shape. So although it's not as easy to use the version on my phone as on my iPad, because obviously it's a lot smaller, you can't write on it with a pen, I can open it and view it, and I can type one or two little bits and pieces. I wouldn't do all my planning on my phone, that's just my choice, but if I want to quickly think, oh, I just need to like add this note in or whatever, I can do it on my phone. So I open up my planner with good notes. There is a video that explains exactly how you need to do that. So I won't go into that in this video, but if you want some help with like the logistics of how to physically get uh, my planner or any digital planner into good notes, then that video should show you exactly everything you need to know. Normally I'd probably do this planning sitting at my computer. So I'd have my and then I would plan onto here. So for the purpose of this video, I will open up my calendar on my phone, even though that's probably not as straightforward as I just thought while I'm sitting here talking to you, this was like a nice and lighter area place than sitting at my computer. The other reason I like the digital planning is you can pick it up and drop it wherever you are at the time and you can take what you need from it and ditch the rest of it without actually feeling like it's wasteful. I think if there were certain new pages in a paper planner that I wasn't using, I'd feel that was quite wasteful. Whereas in a digital planner, sometimes I'd use this month overly page, other times I wouldn't. And it's just whatever works for you at the moment. It is currently the 10th and it's a Friday. So I'm gonna literally just go from where we are at the moment. And I'm just gonna use this. 
you can do this a lot neater if you want to. You can take your time and do this. And obviously it's a lot neater to write if you're not holding it up in the air like this. But you know, it's just for the purpose of showing you. So this is Feb to March. Now obviously I can actually write like this, but do you know what? If I don't want my handwriting to look super messy, I can use the text tool and then I can just literally write there and it will turn my scruffy writing into nice neat te text types. That's kind of cool. So here I'm just gonna plonk an overview of roughly what is happening when. Now you don't have to do this, you don't have to rewrite it out from your digital calendar into your planner, but I sometimes find the action of writing it out like this really helps me to get everything straight in my head and to figure out what needs to be done. And yes, it can be repetition and you can cut this bit out if your brain doesn't feel like you need it. But for me, it does really help me focus on, okay, this is what needs to happen and then let's look for all the solutions and the to-dos and the how we're gonna make all that happen. For example, tomorrow is Zara's party. So the fact there is a birthday party there, it means that there are some things I'm gonna to have to do. And then next Saturday, we're flying to Disney. Yes, we are. We are going back to Disneyland Paris. If you love Disney vlogs, trip vlogs, things like that, make sure you're following me over on my Mummy Four Does Disney Instagram and YouTube channel because all of the vlogs will be over there. So the fact that we're going on a trip means we've got quite a lot to organize and get ready to do. So jot that in here. Now the actual trip planning and the work that I need to do for the trip, I will be using my specific Disney trip planner to organize all that, all my actual packing lists and things. So just for the purpose of planning here, I just need to plan when I'm going to do the packing and things like that. So fly to Disney and then um, we're also just gonna put a large Disneyland Paris and we're just gonna put that over the days that we are going to be there. We have blocked out the days that we are in Disney. So I know there's nothing specific to do there. Obviously there are certain reservations we have or whatever, but we're not gonna worry about that for the purposes of today. So then this Monday after half term, the children are back to school. So obviously that's gonna bring up some things that I need to make sure that we've done before they go back to school. At the time of filming, there is some pending teacher strike action in the schools in Wales. I'm not sure what it's like where you are in like your part of the country, um, but there was due to be a strike coming up on Tuesday the 14th. That has been canceled and they have preliminarily, preliminarily, gosh, moved that to the 2nd of March, which is the week after the children go back to school. So that needs to go into my diary because obviously if I've got the children home, I don't, can't book in work that I need to do where I'm quiet or need to concentrate at all. So there is going to be a childcare issue there. It is my husband's birthday coming up, so I'm gonna have some stuff I need to do for that. The children have a school disco, so there are some things that I need to organize for that. So by going through my calendar on my phone and populating just the key elements, and I'm not bothering to write things like karate that I know are on every week on this. These are just things that are going to require some form of action. Other things that I would need to include on here would be like if the children were going on a school trip and needed a packed lunch when they normally have school dinners. That's the kind of thing. So everything on here that I've put so far is going to require me to do something in order to make it happen. The other one would be, of course, Valentine's Day. So that's on there. As it happens, I have already ordered a card for my husband, so that will not need to go on my to-do list. But if I'd not yet done that, then that would be relevant. I will, however, have to write it, hence why I've included it here. Then moving into my weekly planner, and sometimes I will do the monthly version of this, and sometimes I'll just take it a week at a time. The reason I kind of wanna look a little further ahead at the moment is because I feel like I've got this next week coming up for the trip that I need to plan for. And then there's the trip in the middle, which is a week long. And then I need to plan for the week we get back because there are certain things I'm going to need to do for when we get back. I'll get to what those are in a second. But sometimes I will use that month overview. Sometimes I will just use the week at a time overview. Sometimes I will do both. And it really depends what I've got going on in my life and what level of detail I need to go into. 
Often I will look at the month overview at the beginning of the month and then take things week by week from there on in. But really, that's why I love the digital planner. You can add in pages when you need them. I've got all these different pages saved as templates. So if I feel like I just need an extra brain dump page stuck in there, then I can add it as quickly as that. And equally, if I feel like there's a page I'm not going to need, I can just move to trash and I don't feel like I'm being wasteful of pages in my planner. This may sound strange if this is not something you've experienced before, but if you've like worried about planning because you didn't want to spoil a planner, I think I have been there before. Let me know in the comments if you've ever been there too, that you've just been like, you didn't want to muck things up in a planner, which actually put you off planning in the first place. Okay, so priorities coming up for next week. Now I like to plan things out using this, which is called an Eisenhower matrix. Apparently because it was invented by President Eisenhower and who therefore named it after himself or someone named it after him. And this is where we look at prioritizing to-dos because not all things on your to-do list are equal. There are some things that you absolutely have to do. They're crucially urgent and life will fall apart if you do not do them. And other things that you kind of should do if you get round to them and some things that you really just need to, to shelve for now and move on to another time. And this is a really good way to brain dump that. So rather than putting things directly into that to-do list, I like to kind of brain dump like this. Next, I like to take the things that I've established I need to do and plan when I'm going to do them. So each day I have time blocked out in my calendar, my digital calendar, where I will be working. But what I need to do during that time is what I actually need to plan out. So for example, I have got five videos that I know I need to get filmed, edited, uploaded and scheduled before we go away. So I've allocated one per day that I need to get done. Ideally, I will get more than one done and I can move on to the next days, perfect. But sometimes I think we can overwhelm ourselves with how much needs to be done. And by putting 11 billion things on today's to-do list that you know you're never ever physically gonna have enough hours in the day to get through those things, sometimes that can put you off doing anything at all. Sometimes having a more achievable list that you can actually tick through and then putting the other things on tomorrow's to-do list or next week's to-do list makes it all more achievable, which means you actually have a shot of achieving it. And therefore we'll get on and do it. That's the way my brain seems to work anyway. So for this week, today is Friday, I need to finish filming the pack with me. That is really important because I need to finish packing. And for my sanity, I like to have things finished about a week before we go away, partly because then it gives me time. If I've forgotten anything to add it in, it stops that last minute panic. And also I have to actually edit the pack with me video as well to go out before we go away. Then I originally had a weekly vlog scheduled and instead I decided to do this planning video. On Friday, I have to film the plan with me video that I'm filming now. Well done, Ree. You're actually doing what you're supposed to be doing today. So then I'm trying not to work on the weekends as a rule. However, as we are going away and we will be away for seven days and I won't get any work done at all for seven days, I'm gonna to have to do a bit of work this weekend to catch up to get the stuff scheduled that I should be doing during that week. So this weekend, I no longer have to film the weekly vlog because I'm filming this video instead. And then instead I'm gonna try and edit the packing and then if I can, move on to the Primark shop with me, edit. And then on Sunday, more of the same. So by planning, not just up to when we go away, but the week we get back as well, I can relax and enjoy the holiday a lot more knowing that stuff is planned for when we get back. I don't get back in a dazed, confused state, first day back to work, wondering what I should be doing. I already know. So I actually waste less time then and I can just get on with the things I'm supposed to be doing. So the next stage I need to look at in my planning is meal planning. So this is a multi-stage process. And I don't want that to sound complicated. It's just more like a multi-consideration process. So the biggest one is looking at what I've got actually coming up. Things like on a certain night, the children have got a school disco. On that night, I know we're not gonna have much time for cooking, so it's gonna have to be a really quick snappy tea. And that has to be considered when meal planning. Then I like to look at the ingredients I have to use and then 
go through the cupboards and physically see what needs using up. So for next week, I've had a look. Now I know I've got fish cakes, but I know that the last time I had a delivery, they were short on what was delivered. They did not bring me enough fish cakes to feed everybody. I have, however, got plenty of new potatoes and jacket potatoes. So I've got fish cakes on the menu, but I know I need to pick up one more pack of fish cakes in order to feed everyone. And with that, we'll do new potatoes. I've taken into account that Wednesday is dancing night, hence pizza, super quick tea, and Thursday is karate night. Although on this particular night, it's actually the school disco, but equally, it's one of those nights where it's gotta be a super quick tea. So I've done pasta bake. The children have actually got discos at different times and I know pasta bake will work because that's one of those things I can leave in the oven, feed one of them and then feed the others at separate times. And that is a dish that will work. And then I add my shopping list down this side. Now what I also need to do is meal plan for the week that we are home and make sure that I have done a grocery delivery order and got that booked for when we get back. So I know our flight was delayed last time. I don't like to cut the grocery delivery times too tight. I like to know that we're definitely gonna be here. So if we're getting back on the Saturday night, I would say booking a grocery delivery for Sunday morning is probably the answer. So on today's to-do list, we're finally getting down to the nitty gritty of what I need to do today. On today's to-do list, I'm putting book grocery delivery for Sunday. So I need to decide what we're going to be eating that week. Fresh wise, there's not gonna be much fresh stuff to use up because anything that we haven't used would have had to have been thrown away, it would go yucky. So it's gonna be mostly just buying what I need to use. I've got a notes section at the bottom of each daily page, just for me to brain dump anything that comes to mind. I will use this little section if I'm in the middle of working often, because it's so difficult, isn't it, when you realize, oh my goodness, I've got to do this, or I've got this idea, and you want to stop whatever you're doing, whether you're cooking or washing or working or whatever, and just go and do the other thing. So instead, I like to brain dump in this section so that I know it's not gonna be forgotten from my mind forever. I can come back and deal with that later. So once I've done the meal planning, I will take the shopping list, take that date I know I need to get the grocery delivery booked for, and book that slot. I know I can edit it right up until the last minute, so it doesn't have to be an exhaustive list because quite often I'll have the grocery slots booked and then the night before I will add in any extra bits and pieces that I thought of or that we've run out of since booking the slot. So then on my daily planning, each day I focus on those three priorities. So for today, I've got to film the pack with me, film the weekly vlog or the plan with me, which is what I'm doing right now, and edit the packing. I'm gonna put that kind of in that same, if I get to that, then great. It's like not an absolute, but it's kind of in with that packing video. But then of course, prep for the party has to be a key focus for today. Three things I'm exciting, excited for today. Being packed to go. I really don't want to do the packing because I find it a bit overwhelming and like, oh, it's a lot to do. But by focusing on how I'm gonna feel when it's done, as in relieved and excited, because I can finally get excited for the trip when that's done, then that's worth doing. But what else am I excited for today? Um, being ready for Zara's party. Ready for the party. Again, just focusing on that feeling of relief when it's done and then relaxing this evening and getting an early night. That's what I'm excited for. Then at the end of the day, I can go back, focus on my wins and things I've been grateful for today. Someone's at the door. Okay, I'm back. That was someone at the door. So then each evening before I go to bed, I do like to try and remember. It doesn't always happen, but it really helps when I do it. To focus on the three wins I've had that day. And this just helps to kind of Keep me in a more positive mindset, even when I've found I've had days that have felt really chaotic, I felt like I haven't got enough done. And rather than beating myself up, focusing on things that have gone well can really help me go to sleep in a better mood and therefore wake up in a better mood the next morning. And then three things that I am grateful for. Sometimes the wins I'm grateful for and sometimes it's totally separate things like it actually being sunny on the school run and not getting soaked. That's something I'm grateful for. It's not necessarily a win. I didn't achieve that, but I was definitely grateful for it all the same. So each day I have these three main things that I need to focus on. I jot down timings of what needs to be done and then perhaps when I'm planning to do things. So for example, I've blocked out a bit of time this morning for plan with me filming, which is what I'm doing right now. And then some I've blocked out some time for the packing 
and then this slot before I do the school run will be editing if I've got enough time for that. The more specific micro tasks, those are to-do lists. So my three main focus things is not a to-do as such. So film this video, okay, technically it is a to-do, but there are so many different bits that go into that. So let's take the packing, for example. Film the packing video is like the overarching task I need to do, but that can be broken down into so many little tasks. So for example, I've got to remember in that to talk about my Monzo card that I use for spending abroad because I know I get loads of questions about that. So that has gone into my to-do list. So although film the packing video is like the big task, the little smaller micro tasks would be to film the Monzo thing. And then I've also got to film the air tags for so the children wear air tags while we go around the Disney parks, just as a little backup safety measure. No substitute for keeping an eye on your children, I'm fully aware. But if God forbid we were to lose sight of them in the parks, then it would give us that extra way of being able to locate them quickly. I get so many questions about that. So I put on my to-do list to remember to talk about that in the packing video. And that's one of the things that I jotted down while I was exercising as it happens. I had this, oh, I need to remember to do this. So I paused my workout and added it into my planner page because I knew that by the time it came to working, this is what I'd be working from. So now, according to my planner, my focuses for today are filming this video. Well done, Ray. you've done it. Well done. Going to finish filming the packing. I will be very relieved when that's done because I honestly can't get excited for a trip until I'm ready for it and until I'm packed, which if you've ever tried to pack for large families, can be head work, can't it? Especially if you've got children with additional needs that you know will be really upset if you've not got the right things for them. So my next job is definitely to go and get that done and it is gonna feel so great when that is finished. So with all that being said, I need to go and get on with some packing, which is my next big task, my priority for the day. And then after the children get home from school, I need to prep for Zara's party. So that includes tasks like checking, the cake and knife. So I've got a separate party checklist, which actually I think is included in my Ultimate Mum Bundle, but you can grab that for free if you use all the details on screen and down in the description. The Ultimate Mum Bundle is just a whole load of printables that you can grab that are handy for things like party checklists. They're all on there, so I'll be using that for the party. But that will be something we'll do after school today. Anyway, I'm gonna go and get on with some of my to-dos from the planning. So you can copy out the things I've shown you today on just a piece of paper, or you can grab the digital version or the printed versions using the link below and this little QR code thing on screen. You could scan that, pause the video and scan this and it'll take you directly there. Isn't that clever? Futuristic sci-fi magic. Anyway, thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on the bell and all those lovely YouTube-y things. And I shall see you guys in the next one. Bye.